good season forever. You know, the, the past season is gone and God's grace is covering this bridging season, if you will. And more and more people are, you know, coming into the new season in God, um, but not fully understanding what it is. And it, take cost, it takes revelation. Yes. Yes. Right? Yeah. I wouldn't be where I am except for the revelation God's given. Yeah. In fact, you know, there's a great verse um, that I touched on yesterday about how God grants us these things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We can pursue it, but God's got to grant it to us. Excellent. Excellent. Did you get that? Yeah. This is not about us just laying a hold of it. This is not about our ability to comprehend. That's right. Right? We must pursue it. We must give ourselves to the thing God's doing now, yeah. but God so grants us so to understand. God grants us the revelation. God grants us the insight, the understanding. Yeah. And if God doesn't grant, us, grant it to us, we'll only ever have it in part. Yeah. So, the, so the, the prayer is not just, you know, God, I want in, or God, you know, show me more or whatever. The prayer actually is, God, I'm going to pursue this thing. I'm going to have my heart open. I'm going to be receiving what you've got, you know, in the Holy Spirit and from those who carry the grace of it. But God, I pray that you grant to me yeah. to be a part of, you know, the, the new season, to yeah. be a part of the new thing, yeah. to be able to embrace it in all its totality, you yeah. know. And um, and so what the what we've just seen, you know, in that that presentation is not about any person. If it was, then if it was about how good the person was, I can tell you there wouldn't be a presentation. <laughs> right? It's about the fact that we are moving into a new, th new thing. It's dynamic. It's powerful. It's exceedingly abundantly beyond what we can ask or think. Yes. How is that? Yes. Yeah, it really is. So I'm going to follow on talking about Ecclesia today. Because even that presentation is actually about Ecclesia. It's yes. not about missions. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Just saying. Yes. yes, it's a mission from God, but... Um, and in God, but actually what's, what we've just seen is actually about the Ecclesia of God. Yeah. Right? Because the Ecclesia is the governmental kind of believer, you know, the governmental body of Christ, yes. as you know. And, um, and, you know, so the sons in the nations, they're learning how to be governmental in God. Yeah. Right? Not only to govern their churches or their networks, but to be governmental so that God can actually grant them influence Yes. At all kinds of levels of society. Amen. Fantastic, eh? Yes. And, and it's happening in all kinds of ways, in all kinds of places. There's some things I can't publicly talk about, but it's amazing that some of the influence that God's giving. Yes. It really is. All right, so but I want to talk today about out of, um, uh, out of the Bible, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. shocking, I know, but I'm going to talk from the Bible. <laughs> so let's go to Luke 10 to get started. And um, because, um, you know, last week we talked about the, um, the Ecclesia being, um, uh, you know, the, the process of Christ building his Ecclesia. But when you build something, then that something has got to actually then fulfill its purpose. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So today we're going to talk about the fulfillment of purpose, the purpose of the Ecclesia. All right. And um, so Luke 10. From verse 1. After these things the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. So they went as his rep representatives. He, they actually, he actually sent them to do with John the Baptist wherever they went. Interesting, huh? Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Now that's not just evangelists. Amen. <laughs> yep. It's been interpreted that way and used that way, but it's not just evangelists. No. No. It's it's every kind of labourer that's needed in, in whatever corner of the harvest field. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yes. And we see in Acts eight that you know Philip, along with many others, was sown abroad <coughs> out of Jerusalem, and where was he sown into? He was sown into Samaria. Yeah. Right. But he wasn't the only one who went there. Because once he got things going, then two apostles came down and joined him. All right? So the laborers in the harvest field are not just evangelists. It's everything that's needed. <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah. yeah. 
Verse 3, go your, own, go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. Why? Because the son of peace will receive your peace. Yes. All right? That's the key. If not, it will return to you, so nothing's lost. Interesting, hey? That's good. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the labourer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Now, that doesn't mean we don't, get, you know, impact more than one house. What it means is you stay until the job's done. Right? We see it through. But then verse 8, Whatever city you enter, and they receive you, each such things as are set before you, and he will sit there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter, and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say, The very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. Wow. Interesting, hey? Because the kingdom of God's got to come near to us, close to us, in order for us to be able to enter it. All right? And of course, not everybody enters it. Okay. So, I want to talk today, firstly, about the mobilization of the ecclesia. See, these 70 people, they had been with Jesus for some time, and of course, he poured mainly into the 12, but... He was pouring into a wider group out of which he chose 70 to send on this mission. Why did he choose these 70? Well, because they had become equipped to the point where he could actually send them to do a job. Send them out to represent him. So these people are, you know, these people represent the expansion of the Ecclesia in Jesus' time in, here in the flesh. And, um, and of course he appointed them, as we saw last week, and he sent them. All right? And again, it's two by two. It's not alone. All right? We can't do this thing alone, as Jenny was saying earlier in the service. And then, of course, he tells them what to pray and how to go. But then he says, whatever house you enter. Later on, he says, whatever city you enter. <coughs> this is very, very interesting. Because the church in previous seasons has been very good at entering houses, yes. but not good at all at entering cities. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Did you hear me? Yes. <laughs> In fact, we have withdrawn slowly but surely uh, out of our cities into our buildings. Yeah, that's right. Out of you know the, the, the world's systems yeah. into our own programs. Yes. Yeah? yeah? That's true. <laughs> and so I want to talk about this this morning and a few other things. So entering the house is actually what the church as we know it does really well. Which means we get people saved. And we must continue to get a lot, as many people saved as we can. Yes. Right? But this, this means we are actually entering households. The word is oikio, which comes from oikos. Which is not just the building, but it's the household, the extended family that lives there. Yes. And so... You know, my experience from way back in the 80s as a youth pastor even, was that if we got one person saved, that person was the best evangelist to their circle of influence. Right, right. Starting with their family and then their friends. That's right. What's that? That's their oikos. Yeah? Yes. And we, we exploited that for the sake of the kingdom. Now, I know some people don't like me using that word, but forget about the wrong connotation. It's actually the right word to use. In other words, we... Push that to the max for maximum effect for the kingdom. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We exploited that concept and saw many, many, in fact the youth group grew over five years from twelve to three hundred. That's good. Yeah. We did public evangelism, but our most effective evangelism was actually turning our new believers into evangelists. Or into effective witnesses. Because it's about the oikos. And you know, this is this is what the church as we know it does really well. This is why we have mega churches. This is why today we have um, a higher average number of people in local assemblies than what we used to have a generation ago because we've actually excelled in entering the houses. In other words, we've, we've, we've really figured out how to win someone to Christ and then how through them to win their oikos. Yeah? yeah? 
And that's very powerful because we must bring people into the kingdom of God. So what we do then, of course, is we, we disciple them. We're discipling individuals primarily. But ultimately that means we disciple families. Right? And sometimes extended families or sometimes it's circles of friends that all come in and we disciple them and they become part of the kingdom of God and they get involved in the life of the local church. But, and, but, so this is, this is about the transformation of individual lives and families. And it's very, very important. It's crucial. It's essential. But it's not the whole job. Jesus didn't mobilise his ecclesia people to just win people to Christ and get them into church. All right? You see, if we understand ecclesia, it has to be more than that. Because ecclesia is governmental. It means we govern in the spirit. But it also means that that governing in the spirit translates into us actually changing things in the world systems. All right? And so the thing about the houses is if a son of peace is there, in other words, if someone's got, you know, sees who you are and receives you for who you are, right, then what you carry is going to be received and you're going to actually win that oikos and there'll be transformation of lives and families. Yeah. Right? Very, very important, but it's first stage of two stages. Yes. When Jesus mobilised people, it wasn't just to do what the church has come to excel at in our time. It also was, verse 8, whatever city you enter, yeah. and they receive you. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. We're mobilized to actually influence our cities, not just houses full of people, households of people. Yeah. Right? And the ecclesia kind of people understand this. Yeah. So there are a lot of believers. Who, who um, um, you know, who, who kind of think this is irrelevant, and maybe it's not for believers who think it's irrelevant. But there are people who God is raising up, who are true ecclesia people with kingdom mindsets, governmental kind of thinking, who are saying we have to do something about what's going on in our society. Amen. We can't just win households to the Lord and disciple them and you know see them effective in the life of the church. We have to change things in our society. Yes. Yes. You see, because if we're not advancing in our society, we're retreating. Yes. There's no middle ground. Yes. You can't be static. <laughs> we're either advancing or retreating. All right? This kingdom thing is not a set and forget thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? Do you know that if you set and forget all your bills, you're going to end up paying more than you should pay? Yeah. So you sign up and the money just keeps coming out of your account. You know, and it just gets renewed automatically. You know, and you you think, well, that's all right, I'm covered. You know, my insurance is right, my electricity stayed on, and you know, I can still use my phone, and it's all good. <laughs> Except, and, and I love that, by the way. Set and forget works for me. <laughs> Except that every now and then you see on television someone's advertising something, and I go to my my deal, and I'm like, hang on a minute, that's a better deal. <laughs> We can't do a set and forget thing in the kingdom. No. Right? The way the church has been is not what the way it's always going to be. Yeah. That's right. Because yeah. God's on the move. Yes. And God's restoring his kingdom, restoring the apostolic, and he's restoring ecclesia. Amen. Amen. Yeah? And um, the interesting thing is whatever house you enter, peace to this house, and if a, a son. This is about an individual. Yeah. But when you enter the city, it's about they. Who's they? Well, whatever city you enter and they receive you. In other words, the people of importance in the city. That's it. Wow. Interesting, eh? Yeah. And they receive you. The people of the city receive you. That's way bigger than the oikos. Way bigger than a household full of people. Yeah, and um, and here's, here's what it says: Whatever city you enter, and they receive you. Now we're not being received in some parts of our city. Huh. I, was, I was at a meeting on, yeah, I can't remember now. It was Thursday or Friday. 
with a couple of um, um, federal politicians, and um, they're wanting to put together a task force, uh, you know, for the Olympic Games in 2032. And um, because of what I'm involved with the Southeast Queensland Transformation Group, uh, I was invited to represent them at this meeting. Okay, so th this is a great honour, except that they're all talking about the, the economic benefits, the business benefit, you know, the benefit to sporting clubs, um, all the problems with um, uh, logistics, transport, you know, road, road systems, on and on, because our federal and state governments um, actually have a plan for a, that by 2032, from Noosa to Tweed, will be a mega city. And by the way, South East Queensland is growing faster than it ever has. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is why the house prices are going through the roof. Yeah. And, um, and and when the borders open, there'll be even more people will move to Queensland. That's just how how it's working, right? So we are going to have a mega city in ten years' time, from Noosa to Tweed Heads. The government's got all its plans, and so you know. Um, uh, in fact, it was um, our prime minister's special envoy to the games who was the speaker at this event and uh, was hosted by another federal politician and um, um, you know they're talking about the big picture and they're talking about how will this influence the, the local government areas within southeast Queensland and all this stuff and they broke us into you know breakout groups to discuss three questions all right and so everybody's talking about business economy you know roads all, all the stuff right and when it came my turn to contribute into the, in the breakout group, I said, well, you know, I said, if we're going to have good business or better business and if we're going to have better profitability and if we're going to have a better economy right, in the regions, we have to deal with the social issues. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And they're kind of looking at me with glazed eyes, you know. <laughs> but I said, you know, we have a higher incidence of mental health problems in our nation than ever before. Right. If we're going towards a mega city, it's going to get worse. That's right. And they start nodding. Yeah. And then I said, you know, homelessness will get worse. Yeah. And one lady who was involved, high level in the um, Sydney Olympics, she just jumped in and she said, you're right. I saw what happened in Sydney. And I said, well, we, the people I represent, we actually have got the people who can deal with that. Yeah. 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 And I said, not only that, but domestic violence is going to increase. That's right. With all the work the government's doing, it's not being. They haven't made a dent on it, and then they're nodding. That's right. Yeah. I said, but the, the people I represent, the organisations, I said we can actually change some of this stuff. So, after each question, the person who was, you know, the, the facilitator for each breakout group had to actually give our feedback to the whole meeting. You know, the first time. They didn't include my contribution. But the second time, they sure did. Because the more we talk, the more they realise this is not about dollars, this is about people. Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's good yeah. It was amazing to see the shift that went on in that meeting. Yeah. All right? And here's the thing. We have to enter our cities. That's right. And that meeting the other day was actually about that. Yeah. Right? I'm privileged to be actually at the door, you know, the, on the threshold yeah. of the mega city that's going to emerge. Yeah. Right? And to be able to, along with many others, to be able to influence the systems and the governmental approach to what happens in our society as this mega city develops. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But you know, we. The thing about this is that, that um, we've got to figure out how to be received in our cities. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? I didn't go in there going, well, I'm a minister. <laughs> Call me pastor, please. <laughs> Make sure you use my title. <laughs> I didn't flash, you know, KLC pastor card or something, you know. <laughs> in fact, when they, when they said to me, so, um, you know, so who do you represent? I didn't say anything about me. I said I represent an alliance of people who head up organisations that are committed to transformations in our society wow. for, the, for the better. Yeah. We're committed to the well-being of our city. That's true. Right? That's all I said. And people are like, oh, wow, okay. 
Because that is our mission. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And so they received me on that basis. You see, we've got to be smart in, in entering the city. Yeah. We can't enter the city the way we enter a house. That's right. That's but the ecclesia of God is going to be used to enter our cities. Yeah. In other words, to actually function in such a way that we have a different perspective from the local assembly perspective. And this is not just for apostles and it's not even just for fivefold people. All right? Ecclesia kind of people have a certain mindset. And so God will give us wisdom. Amen. No matter what area we're in. That's right. You know? Might be talking to the local councillor. It might be the local Rotary Club. Who knows? But we can actually be governmental in our city or in our part of the city. And, and if we get this, God will open doors for every single one of us to be able to have some sort of influence as a part of this whole picture. Interesting thought, eh? Yeah. Yeah. And so, if they receive you, well, we've got to actually present ourselves with the, the, in the way the Holy Spirit leads us to so they do receive us. If we come in all guns blazing, you know, Pentecostally, charismaniac-wise, yeah. <laughs> they're not going to receive us. That's right. But if we come in humbly, as, as uh, Glenn has said many times, if we come in low, right, and if we're relevant, not, not compromising anything, but speaking a language that they understand and they see the benefit of our involvement, then who knows what doors will open because we carry grace for this. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, eh? Because we're sent not only into households, we're sent into cities. That's good. We're sent into the systems of our world. We're sent to, to change things. Amen? Amen? And he says, eat such things as are set before you. In other words, don't get all religious on it. Because oh. such things as, as are set before you could have been meat offered to idols. Yeah. But you know, yeah, who cares? Because all that stuff can be sanctified. That's right. All that stuff can be purified, you know? Yeah. Um, and by the way, it doesn't have to affect us because we're under Christ's jurisdiction, not that jurisdiction. That's right. So we can eat what's set before us. That's right. You know? I remember my thinking being shaped by um, a, a lady who I'd known since I was a teenager. And, um, uh, when, when, and her, hearing her say, that when she was in university, she was invited to go to a, you know, um, a, a, an event at a house, which a lot of her um, people she knew in university were involved in. So she went, and it was a séance. <laughs> she had to make a decision. And do you know what the Holy Spirit said to her? Fix it. Run for your life. <laughs> no. no. Holy Spirit said, "Speak in tongues." Fix it. Yeah. Fix it. She just spoke in tongues got up under a breath and just kept doing it and nothing in the seance worked. Of course. <laughs> and finally they're all like, what's going on, you know? Who's stopping this? Me. <laughs> Suddenly they realised there's a new person in the room. They said, is it you? She said, yep. Oh. <laughs> and then she explained, yeah, that's, that's entering the city. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's eating what's set before you. <laughs> Being in places that, you know, um, you know, might be a bit uncomfortable at times, but we're, we're the mature sons of God who are led by the Spirit. Yeah. Amen. And God's got a strategy. He's got a way for every situation. Eat what's set before us. And heal the sick there. I've got to tell you, this is not about praying for people's headaches. No. This is the sickness of the city. Yes. Yeah. All right? Heal the sickness of the city, yeah. is what he's talking about. Yeah. What are the sicknesses of our city? Oh. Wow, greed. You mentioned it. Yeah. <laughs> yep, mental health issues. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Homelessness, domestic violence, drug abuse. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the list goes on, doesn't it? The sicknesses yeah. of our city. Yeah. yeah. Poverty. Do you know we are called here yeah, poverty? The Ecclesia of God is called to invade homes and win whole households and bring them into the kingdom and disciple them so that they function effectively as kingdom people. But that's not where it stops. We are called to our cities and we're called to heal the sicknesses of our cities. Amen. Sorry. Yeah? 
Do you know that the, the whole um, gay rights agenda has been known of since the 60s? Yes. That's right. And yet, somehow, much of the church just was blindsided by the plebiscite that we had three years ago, four years ago. Right. Right. Do you know why? Because a long time ago, we stopped entering our cities. We just ignored this stuff. We didn't have it in our churches, so we just kind of put it aside. You know, well, that's out there somewhere, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Except it has been a sickness of our cities. Yeah. 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 And we're called to enter our cities and heal the sicknesses of our cities. Wow. What do you reckon? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is so powerful because we will actually win more households yeah, yes. as we heal the sicknesses of our city than if we just focus on winning households. We need the dual thing. But as we heal the sicknesses of our city, we're going to win more households to Christ. Amen. Wow. Yeah. You know, one of my sons in the faith, his son, um, his church and home and their food bank is on 10 acres of land in the western suburbs of the city and he has a project that he's launching has launched already in fact he needs fifty thousand dollars by the end of this month all right that's the, just the next thing uh it's going to be millions of dollars project but you know it's going to heal some of these sicknesses in that part of the city yeah great because on that 10 acres he's not going to build a taj mahal for the church <laughs> right, he's going to build housing so domestic violence victims have got a place to come to so the homeless have got a place to set up a life right? so the mental health pe you know, problems people with mental health issues can, can be around people who, who can actually assist them you know? and the list goes on and he wants to, to actually flood this 10 acre property with housing and bring people in do you know, do you know why? Because they're currently helping 4,000 families with food. Yeah. So out of 4,000 families, he's looking at it and you know what? His priority is not, I've got to win some of these people to grow my church. His priority is, I want to heal the sicknesses that have come to my attention in the society and the part of the society we're touching. Amen. That's apostolic. Yes. That's ecclesia. Yes. Because that's more than just entering the house. That's actually entering the city and deal, you know, and in, with the Holy Ghost help, beginning to come up with a strategy to heal the sicknesses of the city. That's right. Isn't that awesome? That's right. Yeah. This is a new day and it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. It's exciting what's happened. So we're sent to do these two things. Now, when we heal the sicknesses, we're to, to declare the kingdom. Heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. Fantastic, hey? Amen. Now, come near you doesn't just mean physically come near. Do you know it's a very strong term? It's almost like um, the kingdom's got you in a headlock. Yeah. That's near. That's near. <laughs> yeah? So the kingdom has come right to you, and it's actually making a claim on you. Yeah. Right? There's an invitation here. There's an offer here. You know? It's, and it's forceful. Yeah. This is why you know, it talks about the, that the kingdom of, of heaven is forceful. Yeah. Not suffers violence. There's not violence against it that it suffers. No, that's the wrong English translation altogether. Yeah. The kingdom of heaven is forceful. And the forceful advance it by force. Yeah. So when it says the kingdom of God has come near, it's actually about a forceful entering of the city. And it's about a forceful declaration. Not without love and grace and mercy, but it's about conviction. Yes. There comes a point when we enter the city and begin to heal the sicknesses of our city where we are to make forceful declarations about why we're doing what we're doing. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. That's it. Yeah. That's the key. So instead of us just having a glory time within a building on a Sunday morning, you know, we're supposed to actually be equipped to be mobilized to do this during the week. That's right. All the time. This is how the ecclesia is supposed to work. <laughs> yeah? I talked last week about the foundation. Today we're talking about mobilization of the ecclesia. And this is how it works. 
We're appointed not only to, to win households, we're appointed to heal the sicknesses of our cities. And to declare that the kingdom really is making a claim on the city. The kingdom is making a claim on the government of the city. The kingdom is making a claim on the business people of the city. The kingdom is making a claim on all the other influences in the city. You know, all, all of the world systems that are, that are functioning in, in the city, the kingdom is making a claim. And how do we make the claim? We begin to heal the sicknesses. That gives us the credibility to make a claim. Yeah. Fantastic, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it really is. And so, you know, we're, we're sent once. God wants to mobilize his ecclesia. Not just raise us up to look good. You know, to be governmental, we've got to be proactive. And so he's mobilizing his, his ecclesia. And you may have heard, heard me say this before, but the caliber of the sender determines the credibility of the sent one. Yes, sir. All right? And there's no greater caliber of sender than God himself. So guess what? As sent ones, we have the highest credibility. We've just got to find a way for our cities to recognize it. Yeah? Interesting, hey? Yeah, and so so then this is about how we're received. You know, the son of peace receives you. But then how they in the city receive us. So to finish off today, I want to just go to Matthew 10. Matthew 10, 40 to 41. He who receives you receives me. Wow. This, this, this is... You know, why we have to understand this stuff because this is the principle we, we must actually walk in such a fashion that people will receive us but Jesus himself said uh -huh. that when they receive you they're receiving me mm. now that's accurate representation of the kingdom isn't it good, yeah. uh, Jesus said in, in John 17 you know, I and the father are one you know? and he said father I pray that they may be one also why? So that when they enter the city, that the, the city will receive them, and through receiving them will receive Christ himself, the king himself. Yes. Amazing, huh? And um, so he who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. Yeah. Yeah. Then, he, then this is the most um, quoted one, verse 41. But you know, it's in between two very important verses, so we've got to see it in context. Yeah. Right? So then he says, He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Do you know why he said that? Because they were, they were in the, the transition period between Old Covenant and New Covenant. Right. Yeah. They were still functioning out of the Old Testament. Yes. That's the only word they had. Yeah. You know? They still had the old, all the Jewish mindsets. Yes. And Jesus was trying to take them through a hybrid season. Yep. <laughs> Yeah? yeah? And so when he said receiving a prophet, they knew what he meant. This was an illustration. This whole passage is not about prophets. This was an illustration so they'd understand his principle. Yes, yes, okay? Yes, yes. He who receives a prophet in the name of the prophet will receive a prophet's reward. But then he says, and he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. This is the relevant one. This is the strong one. Because righteous is not just purity from sin. Righteous is right according to God. Yes. yes. Yeah. Right? In God's right order. Uh -huh. What's God's order for now? God's order now is somewhat different from God's order last season. Yeah. Yeah? And so we are learning how to come into God's order of understanding and function for where God's taken the body of Christ in the earth. Yeah? And so he who receives those who are ordered, recalibrated, rightly aligned, right? Where those people are received, then there's going to come a different reward. Something different's going to flow. Amen. Isn't that awesome? That's great. Yeah? You know, earlier Ben was talking about. You know, the, the grace transference thing, the flow of grace. And it's about alignment. It's not about the person, it's about the grace. Which no one can carry except God grants it to us. And why he grants it to some of us, I have no idea. Seriously, I don't. <laughs> but he's God. Yeah, he's God. That's all we can say. He chooses who he chooses. He graces who he graces. 
He grants stuff to the people he chooses to grant it to, you know? And so it's about the grace. And guess what? You know, um, none of us are perfect. Sorry, maybe you are, you know. <laughs> See, it's not about perfection. It's about God's choice. That's right. Who God wants to use and how he wants to use them. And therefore, then it's about how we receive the people. And we receive what he's granted to them. It's cool, isn't it? Amen. And so guess what? We can learn how to function as Ecclesia people within our city so that our city will receive us. And we can heal the sicknesses of the city and then the, the kingdom's going to come in force into our city. Wow, what a powerful thing. You see, this is, this is a greater impact than having a mega church. Yeah, totally, absolutely. And I'll tell you why it's a greater impact. Because studies have been done, the research has been done by very credible organisations in the US that have showed that mega churches do not change anything in their cities. That's right. That's true. Because they are very successful at entering houses, to use the, the biblical terminology. Yeah. But God's wanting to take us beyond entering houses. We've, he wants us to transform our society. We've got to learn how to enter our cities. Yes. We've got to learn how to heal the sicknesses of our cities. We've got to learn how to be received by our cities. And therefore be able to forcefully bring the kingdom into our cities and change some stuff for the glory of God and for the welfare of the people of the city. Amen? Come on, let's stand and pray. Glory. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, your word is so clear, and yet you only open our eyes to things when it's your time. But we thank you, Lord, that in, our, in this time that we're in, you're opening the eyes of people all over the world to the things we're talking about. And we thank you that the outcome is that cities are being reshaped. Nations even are being reshaped. Yes. And we bless you for that. And Lord, we refuse, Lord, to um, have our perspective influenced by the media. We refuse to have our perspective influenced even by the success of past seasons in, in, in the body of Christ and in the church. We refuse, O oh God, to allow uh, our perspective to be shaped by anything except what you, Holy Spirit, are showing us in the Word of God. Amen. Lord, that we might be in your right order for now. The current thing that you're doing and the way you're leading us into the future. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the effectiveness, Lord, of the churches we've known it. And Lord, in, in entering houses, to use that terminology, we thank you for their effectiveness, the effectiveness we've had, Lord, in winning people to Christ and then, yeah. then winning whole families and winning their friends, circle of friends and so on, and bringing them into the kingdom and discipling them. That God, Lord, in, inside, inside all of us, there's, there's something that resonates with the idea of going to a greater thing, Lord, because we see how that we've lost so much ground in our society. Yeah. We see, oh God, how so many forces, Lord, have occupied the spaces that we've withdrawn from. Yes. And God, we, we want to see this reverse. This is our heart. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, that you have you, you, you've, um, uh, restored and are restoring kingdom understanding, oh God, of your kingdom as the context for your purposes on the earth. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the, that you're raising up and releasing true apostles across the globe who are walking in great authority and great grace. Sure. And Lord, there's great revelation flowing so that we can come to understand that our purpose is beyond, Lord, where we've been before, but we can actually enter our cities. Yeah. Lord, and we can, we can be rightly aligned so that our cities will receive us and we can heal the sicknesses of our cities and we can forcefully declare and introduce the kingdom into our cities and have it received. And so God, we pray for our city today. Yes. Yeah. Lord, we pray for the city of Brisbane. Yes. Lord, this great city, oh God, that in a decade's time is going to host the world through the Olympic Games. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the plans that our governments have. Lord, for South East Queensland in the context of the Games. But God, I pray, oh God, that we'll be able to look beyond all of that and see your purposes, oh God. Lord, and your purpose is that, that we actually invade our city. Yes. Lord, and all, all the local governments.
government authorities in our region, O oh God, Lord, in the way that your word says to, O oh God, yes. that we will, yes. Lord, know how to be rightly aligned and in your order, Lord, so that we'll be received. And Lord, give us strategies and give, give your people, O oh God, your kingdom-minded people, your ecclesia people. Lord, I pray, give them strategies, Lord, to be able to heal the sicknesses of our city so that your kingdom will come into our city, Lord, in greater measure than we've ever known, I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, this is our, our desire because, because you've given us this desire. Our desire is to have a society that is well, yes. Lord, that is healthy, Amen. that is whole, Amen. and that is God glorified. Amen. Lord, where you're honoured, Lord, in every level of government and in every level of society. Hallelujah. And God, I thank you, Lord, that you're opening our eyes to see yes. your purpose and how to go about it. Yes. And I pray, Lord, that every person, Lord, who, who watches this video and listens to this message, Lord, that there'll be great revelation, insight, understanding, wisdom, yes. counsel that comes from the Holy Ghost yes. will come into people's lives, I pray. Lord, that, that there'll be an ecclesi a body of ecclesia kind of people that will rise up and say, God, I want to be a part of entering my city. Oh, yes. I want to be a part of, of being rightly aligned with you and with, with others in the ecclesia so that together... We can heal the sicknesses of our city yes. because our city has received us as the healers of the city, yes. as the healers of the sicknesses. Yes. And Lord, as a result, then your kingdom will yes. come in great power and glory yes. into our cities. Then yes. transformation will be the outcome and you'll be glorified. Yes. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that, um, that these things we're talking about, Lord, will just really take root in our hearts yes. and not leave us. Lord, let none of us be able to go away and just kind of go, that was a great message. No, but instead, Lord, I pray that, Holy Spirit, that you keep bringing us back to these things, O oh God, so that our understanding will grow and develop, that the revelation will unfold, and that you'll give each of us strategies as to how to be effective, Lord, in, in entering the houses, the households in our community, but also entering the, this part of the city at another level. Yeah. Lord, open doors, Lord, by your grace, open doors for each and every person, O oh God to be able to have a wider and greater and more, more powerful influence than ever before so that, so that all of us can be a part of healing the sicknesses of our yes. city and seeing your kingdom come in greater Amen. measure. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we commit this to you this morning, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.